what I want to talk about today, um, in the spirit of improv, is not do really a case study on Hotel Tonight, but more of a case study on what I've learned about personas in my career, and talk about why I hate personas. And frankly, why I think you should hate personas and stop using personas. And I know this is radical, anti-Cooper U, anti inmates are running the asylum, but let me make my case as to how they have hurt my products in the past and how I think there's a better, uh, more creative approach to solving these problems. So let's level set. Personas today, I'm hoping that most of you know what a persona is. Hands up. Okay, great. Got a knowledgeable audience. I don't need to start there. So we've all seen these, right? We've got made up names of people that we know something about them. They're probably married and 32, right? Um, they're, uh, this one I found particularly fun, and you can't see it because of the resolution, but it actually has this person's Myers-Briggs profile, and it's not even a binary about whether they're an ENTJ. It's like they're slightly introverted. Um, Jane, I mean, how many, who's had a persona named Jane, right? Like, everybody's had a persona named Jane. Um, this is fun, Brandy actually has quotes um, attached to her, and this one I found particularly interesting because, again, the resolution is a little tight, but um, on the right-hand side are 12 different personality characteristics. And even when we talk about lean and doing personas, I find them to be an incredible waste of time. And so why am I frustrated with personas? Ultimately, these are, to do them well, takes tens of hours. The amount of research and aggregation and content that needs to be gathered about who your users are, the, the, the foundational work to create a persona and do it well is extensive. And then you take all of these individuals and you average them into someone who's not real. You average them into someone with 2.4 kids. These are not real people. And so then you're building your product for the average that doesn't exist. On top of that, there are very few people who can actually be involved in the creation process. So what you spit out is a persona that has a fake average personality behind it that you're supposed to rally your whole company around and everybody's supposed to care about Jane, but no one really knows or has empathy for Jane and Jane doesn't really exist. However, the intent of the persona is to focus the business, right? And I think this is actually where it really fails us as product managers or product people and designers. And let me tell you where I've screwed up with personas. So if I talk about my own persona fail stories, uh, one of my first product roles was uh, leading a product that was a, uh, what they call a radiology information system, RIS. Um, it's a tool that radiologists use in the hospital and in any sort of uh, imaging center to read the x-rays that come in, read the images that come in, CT scans, whatever it is, and actually write up their report, generally dictating their report. So you can see I'm not that user, so it was important for me to have personas. So we spent a lot of time understanding our radiologists. We were focused on academic university hospitals, so these are like the big headline hospitals, UCLA, BMC, NYU, anything that when there's like a national tragedy, that's where people go. Those are the types of hospitals we were focused on. So we spent a lot of time understanding both the radiologist and what we call the rad tech, the radiologist technician. So we spent hours thinking about how we could make lives better for the radiologist. The radiologist was the most important person. The, how we could really focus on our user. We were doing what we were supposed to do, which was make sure we had the right personas and that we were solving the right problems for our users. What was happening in the industry, and this is 10-year-old information, so I'm dating myself a little bit, was the rise of two other characters. One, the referring physician. And as you probably have now experienced, the hospital system is much more fluid and there isn't just one radiologist that everybody's working with. You're getting referred from physicians and there's much more interaction and you have a wider network of, of care, of caregivers that are involved and need to communicate. And that also leaves out the patient. So while we're focusing all of our time on our personas, we're missing the real big stakeholders in the room that actually are impacting decisions and it turns out the radiologist doesn't choose the software anyway. So that was how I screwed up with personas the first time. And I thought, I'm smarter than this. I will do better next time. For my next role, I was doing product or leading product at a company called Snagajob. Uh, most of you are probably not familiar with Snagajob, which is a good thing. Uh, this is a product for helping you find jobs that are paid by the hour. 
Um, and I say it's a good thing not because there's anything wrong with that market, but because the marketing is very much focused on a key set of users. So we always focused on students, right? 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, summer jobs, that's who we were focusing on. We did focus on professional hourly workers, so full-time workers at McDonald's and full-time workers at Jamba Juice. Those were the types of companies we worked with. We focused on moms, so people who needed supplemental income or would work part-time. And again, the elderly. I can't tell you how long I searched for an elderly icon that made sense, and that was the best I could do, I'm sorry. I tried. But the gist being, we had our four personas. So we again had our four personas that we were focused on. How could we make life easier for the mom who was busy, needed to pay for diapers, and was really looking for a way to get supplemental income? We spent hours studying these personas. We did follow me homes. We did this extensive linear study. I mean, we did it all as we were supposed to do it. And what Snag a Job missed was the rise of the on demand economy. And so what we missed was not that the personas weren't being satisfied. What we missed was the entire trend of how the workspace was shifting and how there was a whole new way of going about filling this need that our users didn't know and weren't going to take advantage of. So how do we get here? Personas aren't all wrong. It's not like we should go back to not talking about users. I mean, personas have really great intent. So what are we trying to accomplish? One, we want to use, include the user in design. I think always, of course, no one's, I'm not going to stand up here and say designing for no user is a better alternative. That's a stupid thing to say. Um, we also really want to imp, you know, bring real people into the conversation so that when we're building products and particularly communicating with development and other people who may not have as much interaction with the users, we want to make it feel real and have them have empathy. And again, we want to align the company behind focus, right? We can't be everything to everybody. We need to have a strategy that focuses on the segment. How do we better do that? And then ultimately, what we really need more than ever, and that's probably why you're all here, is faster, smarter decision making. We can't spend 40, 60, 80 hours aggregating this data to come up with chain. So here's my pitch. I would encourage you to use use cases. And so rather than focusing on a segment, and rather than focusing on a particular user where you're supposed to pivot your product to that user, I challenge you to think about problems and think about use cases and how your product can solve that use case and then figure out which, which people in the world that applies to. So start with a situation where someone would find your product. Think holistically about all the scenarios and players. Think about what can be done how many different people enter that scenario and have that problem? Where are they? What's going on? What's the context? What emotions do they feel? Um, and then align on the situational details and constraints and go from there. So that sounds like jargon. How does this actually work? So this was something we did at Prezi. So at Prezi, we were presentation software. How many people in this room give presentations? Yeah. Okay, that was Prezi's problem. Everybody gives presentations, and so when you start to talk about personas, it's like a million different people, and then if you start to focus in on the salesperson, so we really want to make the salesperson effective, there's like a whole network of people that that has to happen, and then if you think about the, the educational environment in which you give presentations, it just becomes this scattered product. So we talked about use cases. We talked about high-stakes presentations right now. This is a high stakes presentation where I'm standing on stage, making myself vulnerable to you, and I have concerns, right? I have emotional needs, I have situations, but you've been me and you will be me. We all go through high stakes presentations, but what are the feature set that needs to solve the needs in that situation? We then also talked about how we could solve problems for convincing an audience. So this may not be high stakes, this may just be pitching your CEO on your idea, but how can you do it in like a compelling and engaging way? What are the needs in that situation? What are the features that that applies to? All of you could be these users, but we don't want to solve all of your problems. We want to solve your problem when your real challenge is how do you convince an audience or how do you give a high stakes presentation? And of course, we have anti-use cases. So how do you do it without? Uh, or what problems are you not going to solve? You're not, you know, with Prezi, we had endless debates about reporting and how we were going to solve for printing and all these different situations and the leave behind projects. These were not things that we focused on. These were not important. 
You as a user could probably do a high stakes presentation, need to convince an audience, and need to do a report that had to be printed and circulated all at the same time, but we weren't focused on you as the user, we just wanted to solve your use case where you were. The same is true at Hotel Tonight. So at Hotel Tonight, for those who don't know, um, we are a last minute booking tool. We are mobile only. We are mobile not because it's trendy, though it is very trendy now. We are mobile because it's last minute bookings. And when you're on the go and in that moment and you need to make a hotel booking for tonight or for tomorrow, you rarely get out your laptop. You probably have your phone on you and it's easier to just do three taps, uh, what we call three taps and a swipe, to actually book a hotel room. So what are we focusing on? What are those use cases? Spontaneous travel and stays. I don't know, you know, let's go away tonight. Let's keep, we're having a great time in Napa. Let's stay, let's keep going. Trips without clear plans. So I'm gonna go to New York City next week and I have a couple meetings lined up, but I'm not entirely sure where I wanna stay or what the most important thing is. I don't know what the weather is gonna be like. I'll figure it out when I get there. And that's when I'll decide where I stay. And then of course emergencies, right? Last minute hotel bookings often come when you have to book a, you know, your flight changes, something emergency comes up. But there's a lot of use cases we don't apply to. So a trip with detailed plans. We're having a bachelorette party, we need 12 rooms for 24 girls that must stay at this hotel. That's not a problem we solve. Family travel, we talk a lot about that, right? So we have detailed plans and all these constraints and needs. Those aren't use cases we're solving for. But again, my goal is that all of you are users at some point when you meet our use case needs and we're not solving for all of your problems. Make it real. Okay, making it real. How do we do this at Hotel Tonight? So, something we've been working on over the past year is how we can solve the problem for you when you have nothing to do this weekend. It's Friday night, it's Saturday morning, this happens in my house a lot. We wake up, we've got two days off, what are we gonna do? Well, what are, what are the situation, what's the situation you're in? What's the context, right? No clear plans, looking for inspiration. What's the emotional state? We're probably relaxed, probably curious, probably a little bored. How can we make something more interesting in that situation? And how do we really bring to life a product that can solve that use case that probably happens to all of you at some point in the year? And so with that, this is what, one of the features we've developed in the past year. Resolution stuff on this, but this is what we call our escape feature. So this recommends nearby destinations to you that we know are on, on good deals, good discounts, where we have cheap rates. So specifically this weekend, um, South Lake Tahoe, super great rates. And maybe that's, and it, we recommend it because it's a good time because the mountains have just opened, ski season is just starting, but it's super cheap if you want to get away. This is regionalized for every city. We have different recommendations, but the idea is how do we get you out of town this weekend? And thinking about that use case rather than that persona. Another feature we've launched is what we call geo rates. Um, again, sorry about the resolution, but you'll see on the right hand side, there's a little green tag on one of those hotels. Um, this has been really interesting. So what we've seen is by letting our hotels target users in different regions, they can actually convince you to go out of town for the weekend. In fact, we've seen that our Las Vegas hotels, if they will target users in SoCal with better rates, they can actually drive bookings from people leaving Southern California to Las Vegas, because they need something to do this weekend, and Vegas is cheap, why not go? I mean, the book, I should have brought the bookings map that shows the number of people who are booking on the highway from, so, from LA to Vegas, it's incredible. But this is about solving problems. This is about solving use cases. These people may be professionals, they may not. They may be parents, they probably aren't. Because <laughs> parents tend to have detailed plans. But they're definitely not personas. They have many different personalities. They just all have the same problem, which is that they need something to do this weekend. And when I look at our competitors, and I am picking on one competitor, and I don't mean to, and I hope they're not here, because this will be horribly embarrassing. If we think about what, a, if, I, if I were to solve for a persona, a business traveler persona, for instance, and I think about all of the different use cases and needs a business persona would have, from helping with the executive assistant, to the expense reporting, to the, com the complete hotel experience, 
you end up with what is actually a beautiful design on a really complex product where you have to offer flights and hotels and car rentals and activities and wait, here are three hotels for you and here's what's going on nearby and it just becomes overwhelming. The irony is that in an attempt to solve a problem for a persona, it becomes much more complicated. So my pitch to you today is that you throw away your personas. Please stop spending tens of hours gathering all of this incredible data to create Jane and start thinking about how you can research on the use cases and the problems and think widely about where you, who has those problems and how you can solve them. So with that, I will turn it over. Thank you.